How the Kidney Works, Part 2, by casescience.com. I'm now drawing the Bowman's capsule of the nephron. This is the Bowman's capsule. And inside the Bowman's capsule is a series of capillaries called the glomerulus. So glomerulus is a series of capillaries that surround the Bowman's capsule. And it is this part of the nephron where filtration occurs. The process of filtration occurs between the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. Inside the blood, you're going to find the following substances, the first being proteins. You will also find red blood cells inside the glomerulus, because it is a capillary. And you'll find smaller molecules of water, urea, and glucose inside the glomerulus. It is called filtration because water, urea, and glucose are filtered out of glomerulus and into the Bowman's capsule of the nephron. But because proteins and red blood cells are too large, they're not going to pass through the partially permeable membrane of the capillaries into the Bowman's capsule. So they remain inside the capillaries. So remember, proteins and red blood cells remain inside the capillaries. The glomerulus are capillaries that supply the Bowman's capsule with blood that needs to be filtered. And this blood contains proteins, blood cells, urea, water, and glucose. Inside the Bowman's capsule, you're going to find water, glucose, and urea from the blood that has been filtered. Because large molecules, such as proteins and red blood cells, they stay in the blood. They do not enter the nephron. So a sign of kidney disease is finding blood in your urine or proteins in your urine. This is because filtration is not working properly and blood and proteins are entering your nephron. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. After filtration, the next process that occurs inside the nephron is selective reabsorption. Selective reabsorption. And this process happens in the first convoluted tubule after the Bowman's capsule and before the loop of Henle. So selective reabsorption happens in the first convoluted tubule. The components of the filtrate inside the first convoluted tubule in this point include water, glucose and urea. It is the glucose that is now selectively reabsorbed back into the blood from the nephron. Water and urea remain in the nephron. So glucose is reabsorbed back into the blood from the nephron. The first adaptation of the first complete tubule is that it's surrounded by blood capillaries. So a large surface area of blood capillaries surround the first convoluted tubule. This large surface area of capillaries surrounding the first convoluted tubule increase the selective reabsorption of glucose back into the blood from the nephron. It is during selective reabsorption where glucose is actively transported from the first convoluted tubule back into the blood. It is actively transported. And no glucose should be left behind in the nephron. Not only is the first convoluted tubule surrounded by capillaries, the first convoluted tubule also has microvilli structure, which increases the surface area of the first convoluted tubule. As you can see here, the microvilli increase the surface area, causing there to be an increased rate of active transport of glucose back into the blood. Because the first convoluted tubule actively transports glucose back into the blood, there needs to be many protein pumps in the membrane of the first convoluted tubule, as well as many mitochondria to produce the energy for the active transport of glucose from the first convoluted tubule into the blood. The filtrate leaving the first convoluted tubule into the loop of Henle should contain no glucose, as all the glucose should have been actively transported out of the first convoluted tubule. All that should be left is water and urea. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding.
water needs to be reabsorbed out of the nephron and back into the blood. This happens in the loop of Henle. It is the loop of Henle where water is reabsorbed. Water and urea now enter from the first convoluted tubule into the loop of Henle, whereby water now osmoses from a high to low concentration from the loop of Henle into the blood. So remember, water is reabsorbed by osmosis, the movement of water from a high to low concentration through a partially permeable membrane. The partially permeable membrane now being the capillary membrane and the loop of Henle nephron membrane. So remember, water leaves the loop of Henle into the blood by osmosis, and urea stays in the nephron. So the watery absorption happens in the loop of Henle of the nephron whereby water is transferred into the capillaries by osmosis. Not all the water is reabsorbed from the loop of Henle into the blood. Some water will remain and enter the collecting duct along with the urea. So remember this, water isn't completely reabsorbed in the loop of Henle. Water and urea now enter the collecting duct from the second convoluted tubule. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. So now the remaining urea and water enter the collecting duct via the second convoluted tubule. In the collecting duct, water is going to be reabsorbed back into the blood. Water is reabsorbed back into the blood. And if there is a high concentration of water in your blood and you're really hydrated, much of that water in the collecting duct is going to pass through the ureta to the bladder and out of your body. So any remaining urea and water that needs to be excreted is going to be excreted as urine. So this water and urea mixture is going to pass through the ureta into the bladder where it is stored. Remember, so the function of the bladder is to store urine, which is a water and urea mixture. The urine stored in the bladder is then passed out of the body via the urethra. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Press pause to practice using those key words. The answers will follow. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. And if you're stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Visit kscience.com for more free videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com and don't forget to like and subscribe.